Chichester is a walled city where the Roman pattern still survives and the cathedral crowds onto the main street. The 20,000 inhabitants live the unexceptional life of any rural county town, a quiet, pleasant place going about its business. Then, quite suddenly, one of its citizens, Leslie Evershed Martin, a former mayor of the city, launched a wild, improbable scheme. He had a vision, and today that vision has been converted into concrete. And it stands as a sharp lesson to the sober-minded, the pessimists and the common-sense boys, and as an encouragement to all romantics. Just before 7 o'clock on the 3rd of July 1962, the voice of Laurence Olivier floated through the foyer of Chichester Festival Theatre, asking the audience to kindly take their seats. A couple of minutes later, the national anthem played, everybody stood up, and then the house lights went down. And the story of Chichester Festival Theatre had just begun. My own story with CFT started when I was six years old and I was brought by my parents to see a production of The Italian Straw Hat with Sarah Bradell, who was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in real life and certainly on the stage. This is where I had my first paid job, selling ice creams when I was 16 in the foyer. And in fact, my last paid job in 1998 when I was administrative director here for a couple of years under Andrew Welsh. The theatre is the most extraordinary story of local people getting together, putting their money where their mouth was, and making a theatre happen. A local ophthalmic surgeon in the 1950s had seen a programme on a theatre across the water in Canada and thought that he wanted a theatre like that in his hometown, Chichester, in West Sussex. As you do, he thought, who is the most important person in theatre? Laurence Olivier. And he rang him up and said, if I can get the money to build a huge theatre in Parkland in Chichester, will you come and be my artistic director? And Laurence Olivier, I assume, so surprised by the request, said he would. On 1962, that day in July, that dream became a reality. And now 50 years on, with every single leading director, designer, actor that really has ever appeared in a film or television on stage has walked through these foyers, has walked down these aisles and played on this amazing stage behind me. And in 1989, another theatre was added, the Minerva Theatre. And the first director there, a certain young man called Sam Mendes. And with the book for the 50th anniversary, uh, and where. Uh, publishing it with Unbound and it's a, a crowdfunding book. It's the idea that readers say what they want to read and, and that's how the book comes about. And of course there's a wonderful mirror in that that's how the theatre came about and it was always called The Impossible Theatre. Yeah. But do you think, you know, for me writing it, mm. it's the same as your story and many other people's story. This book is a love letter from all of us to a theatre that came about because we all wanted it and is going to go forward for, let's hope, the next 50 years in the same way. Do you, do you think that's right, that there is a special I think there is. Affair? I think there is a special affair here for um, anybody who grew up in, in this city or this region. I mean, I, 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 t I talk about our, our generation, because uh, the, you know, the joke is that everybody in Chichester who comes to the theatre is you know, over 80 and, and helped build the theatre. And of course, there are still people who did put their hand in the pocket and come but what I love is the fact that there's a sort of second generation thing that a lot of you know a lot and of a third. and a third generation yeah, <laughs> yeah that that, that um, you know that affection um, that was apparent by those people who built it has been passed on to their children and their children's children um, and and I, I do think that's something to do with the magic space I think it's something to do with the magic people that this theatre has always worked with and all the you know all theatres are a f uh, you know a sort of form of extended family. And what's exceptional about this did that's always true backstage and for the people who work mm -hmm. there. Um, somehow that circle includes the audience here in a way it doesn't necessarily in a more metropolitan city. And I think it's something about being you know people talk about Chichester and they know there's a cathedral and they know there's a theatre. Fifty years on. The idea of getting local people, audiences, and I suppose in this case a book, readers, to fund the projects they want is exactly how this theatre was founded. The stories that are going to be told in the book are all the things you would expect from a rumble-tumble story of theatre and stage and screen. So the day when Vivian Lee came and sold raffle tickets in order to raise money for the very first season of the theatre. The production of The Scarlet Pimpernel, where there was so much blood from the guillotine that the dry cleaning bills were colossal that year and the profits went down. 
all the directors that came and went, the scandals on and off the stage, even right back to the very beginning, where while the theatre was waiting for its planning permission and had a spy in the local authority chamber to hear whether permission had been granted, as he ran to come out and ring the people in London waiting to do the press conference to announce the 62 season, the door handle came off and nobody knew whether the theatre would even be built. Here there have been first performances of many of the greatest plays that have now become very popular. There have also been scandals when Chichester was slightly challenged by the sorts of plays that were being put on. So when Alan Bates came to do A Patriot for Me, the board was very upset and was rung up by the government to be told that they had to take the play off because it was, quote, buggery from beginning to end. That's why this theatre matters to people. That's why people want to support this theatre. And you, if you join in now and you support this book and you want to know all of those stories about 50 years of Chichester Festival Theatre, you too can be a little bit of that history and have your name in the back of our book.